Welcome back to AlgoJS. Today's question is leak code 300, longest increase in subsequence. So given an integer range nums, return the length of the longest strictly increase in subsequence. A subsequence is a sequence that can be derived from an array by deleting some or no elements without changing the order of the remaining elements. For example, 3627 is a subsequence of the array 0316227. So in the first example, we have this nums array and the output is four. And that's because two, three, seven, and 101 is the longest common increase in subsequence. That is length four. So because this question is asking for the longest, so a maximal, we should think about using dynamic programming. So basically at each number, we want to work out the maximum subsequence at that position. So let's draw a DP array out and we'll use the iterative bottom up approach. We have this nums array here. We want this DP array to be the same length as this. Okay, great. We can populate it with those values. Now at any one position, what is the minimum subsequence? So at any one position, what is the minimum length subsequence? So if we're at position zero in here, what is the minimum subsequence or what is the subsequence we can achieve at this point? Well, it's going to be one, right? Because this is of length one. It's going to be the same with one. If that was on its own, that would be one. If this was on its own, that'd be one. So we can initialize all of these values to one because at any of these values, the subsequence is never going to be zero. So this is our kind of base to start off with. So because we know zero is already one and there is only one value here, we can start off at this position. So let's have a look. Is one greater than zero? So we're going to look at the previous values. Yes, it is. So what's going to be greater? Is it going to be this value here, one, or is it going to be the previous value plus one, which is equal to two? It's going to be two. So let's update this. Let's move on to the next one. So is zero greater than one? No, it's not. Is zero greater than zero? No, it's not. So we can move to the next value and leave this as one. Is three greater than zero? Yes, it is. So we can look at this value here and compare it to this value plus one. So which is greater, two or one? So we can update this to two. Then we compare three to the value before that. So is three greater than one? Yes, it is. So which is larger, two or this value plus one? Well, it's going to be three. So we can update that. Then we can compare three to zero. So three is greater than zero. So we choose the maximum between one plus one and three. So we keep three. So we keep three here. Now that three has been checked, we can move to two. So we compare two and three. Two is not greater than three. So we leave it as is. We go back one. So is two greater than zero? Yes, it is. So we choose the maximum between one plus one and one here. So we're going to update this to two. So now would be a good time to write down the optimal substructure. So the optimal substructure in this case is DP at current so the current value we're on is going to be equal to the maximum, remember this is pseudocode, between dp at prev, so the previous value within the dp, plus one, and dp current. So let's go back to this. So now two is compared with one. So two is greater than one, so we choose the maximum between two plus one and our current value. So we're going to update this to three. We compare two with zero, which is greater, one plus one or three. So we leave three there. Now two has finally been looked at, so we can move on to three. So we're at the last value. So it's three greater than two. Yes, it is. So we choose the maximum between three plus one and one. So we can update this to four. Is three greater than three? No, it's not. Is three greater than zero? Yes, it is. So we can choose the maximum between one plus one and four. So we leave it at four. Is three greater than one? Yes, it is. So we choose the maximum between three and four. So we leave it at four. Is three greater than zero? Yes, it is. So we choose the maximum between two and four. So we leave it as this. And what we need to do is return the maximum value that is found within here. So in this example, the maximum value is found at the end, but it could be found anywhere within this array. So just watch out for that. And then time complexity for this. Well, as you can see, we loop through this nums array here. 
And as we're populating this DP array, we have to compare it to all previous values in nums. So there are two loops, one going forward, one going backwards. So time complexity is going to be O n squared. And then space complexity is going to be O n because we're using this auxiliary data structure to create this DP array. Okay, so let's create the DP array. So it's going to be new array, nums.length, and we're going to fill these values, we're going to initialize them with one. Then we need to loop through from i is equal to one. So we start at the first value. i is less than or equal to nums.length because we want to go up to and include the last value. And now we need to loop backwards. So we loop backwards where j is equal to i. So j is at the i value. j needs to be greater than or equal to zero. j minus minus. And if nums are i, so the current value we're on, is greater than nums at previous, then we can say dp at i is equal to math.max dp at i and dp at j plus one. And then a quick way to loop through the values and find the maximum is to just use the spread operator. So math.max spread out the dp. Okay, let's give this a run. And there you go.